How's everybody doing out there today? Just want to do a quick little uh, unboxing. I just picked up another set of these speakers. Uh, I believe the, the third one I got from my old vehicle. Um, also wanted to share a little bit of information. Um, I guess you take it with a grain of salt. You know, I've been doing this a long time, but I've always found uh, even when I was selling professionally, that the best way to sell an item is to let it sell itself. You don't have to lie about shit. You know, you don't have to bullshit people. You don't have to tell people a, a 5,000 watt amp is a, a 15,000 watt amp. You don't have to tell people 500 watt amp is a 3,000 watt amp. Anyway, um, I guess a lot of the people that I was around The majority of the time before I opened my own place, and that's how they rolled, man. Um, the whole game was let's sell them some bullshit, and then when they don't like it and it ain't loud enough, we'll upgrade them, quote unquote upgrade. Um, which is a whole nother fiasco. I don't even feel like getting into right now. Anyways, um, so these speakers, um, they're not exactly cheap, but they're not expensive. Um, I think they go for about 200 bucks, but, um, for people looking to bring out the voice of, um, your recording, whatever you're listening to, um, the actual voices, um, the mid to lower treble, the, the claps, Kind of that awkward frequency range that the, the mids don't want to play um, comfortably because they're handling a frequency range. And the tweeters also don't want to play because they are handling a frequency range. Um, when you take the stress off of the mids and you take the stress off of the tweeters and you kind of you, you fill it in there with something in the middle, not only does it fill out your music and make things fuller, but it also takes all the strain off of the mids and the tweeters that were already there for them to do their thing and they do it better and they do it louder and they do it clear. Anyways, um, so let me get this thing open and show you these things about. I'll show you what I'm taking out too that I had in there temporarily, which are also decent speakers, but old school polk boys the dbs with the gold cone ain't nothing wrong with them um i don't know why you need an extra tweeter on there coaxials i always kind of bothered me um and this has got a little filter so it's a plus This is uh, DB Drive's highest line, I guess you could say. Um, it's the Euphoria ES9, three and a half. Tiny little neodymium magnet. Um, the specs on these things, they handle a ton. As long as you're pushing clean power to them, you're not trying to push anything too low. And you're not trying to push anything too high. And you stay in their comfort zone. Man. I got 125 RMS going to each one right now. And they're the loudest speakers in my car. Literally. Alright, so. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to bump the camera. They're rated from, you know. 75 to 100 RMS says they handle 200 to 3200 um, I usually set them about 500 500 to 3,000 That way you can really push them. You're not uh, Stressing them Sorry, I'm trying to get this damn thing to focus a little bit Anyways, you know what I'll put a link to them in the description or in the comments so everybody can check them out but i'm telling you man if you want a good set of speakers um 
if you already got a component set, if you already got the component set on an amplifier and it just ain't sounding right, sounds like it's missing something, you can't ever get it to, to hit that sweet spot, man, these speakers are something else. And believe me, I've heard the JBL, I've heard the Stadium, I've heard the, uh, the Kappa Perfects. Um, I'll tell you what, the only thing that can shake a stick at these damn things is uh, some of the Hurt stuff. That I've heard anyway. Um, but you're gonna pay for it, man. You're gonna pay for it. So you're gonna pay five hundred dollars for a set of coax, or you're gonna pay eight hundred dollars for a set of set of components. Um, so, anyways, I just wanted to show these boys off a little bit. They end up putting them back together. They got a really nice stamp grill. The grill's actually got a little design in the middle. Oh, one second. my phone was going into low power mode um anyways like i was saying you got a real nice grill system um they had a cool ass design in the middle of it gives a little bit of flavor not sure if you can see it in the video at all try and get it where it lines up so as the grill makes it past the area that would be above the surround, it kind of gets flat. Instead of just being like a round shaped grill. And it really looks nice when you when it's mounted in the door. Um, you know what? I'll just grab this right quick. Real clean. Um, also a great thing about them is the mounting depth and the magnet size. Um, compared to the Polk, I mean the Polks aren't huge speakers either. But I mean, if you look at the magnet size, I mean that's crazy. The real crazy part is, I mean, if I had to, to estimate, I'd say the Neo motor on these DB drives, maybe 10 times as strong as that big fat boy on the Polks. Um, you know, one other thing I want to mention is you know, people say, oh, neodymium, yeah, well, takes more power, blah, 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 less room, smaller magnets, smaller motor structure. Uh, one of the things that people don't realize is um, it allows your speakers to be more dynamic. Um, it has more control over them. It's almost like uh, powering a subwoofer with the correct amp versus an amp that's too small. Um, when you add more power, not only does it you know make the shit louder like everybody thinks that's all it does it also gives it gives the amplifier more control over the speaker it moves faster um it stops quicker you know when you got some shit rumbling or you got a nice frequency note hitting and it stops immediately and you feel that thump and then it just disappears that's another thing that uh that a neo magnet is better at than a ferrite magnet um it's just that that added little bit of dynamic execution that uh, that a ferrite magnet can't keep up with, and also one of the reasons they cost so much more than a regular magnet. Here we go. 
on with these special wheels. <laughs> the crazy part is they're not that sensitive. Um, they're not going to overpower everything. They're going to get loud when you crank your shit up, and they're going to they're going to blend right in the background when you don't. Um, a lot of these manufacturers will take a speaker like this and make it six decibels um, more sensitive than the rest of the speakers or nine decibels more sensitive. People get these damn compression tweeters like, oh my God, it's so loud. No, it's just getting louder sooner than the rest of your speakers. You know, you got a six and a half rated for 89 decibels and you got a super tweeter rated for 97 decibels. That means that that super tweeter needs like a quarter of the power to produce the same sound that your six and a half is gonna produce, at least the same uh, volume level. So you wanna to try to keep everything in your system matched as much as possible, unless you wanna to try to get different amplifiers and you have different wattages coming out of the amplifiers and everything just gets more complicated if you do it like that. Um, just a quick little video, wanted to say what's up. A little peek on what I'm doing here. Kind of looks like a rat's nest right now, but here's the star of the show right there. We're gonna go for loudest single sub in the trunk of a vehicle in Michigan real soon. Y'all better set the game up. <laughs> Just kidding. I always love getting my customers louder than me. I don't give a shit. Uh, Y'all, it's getting kind of late. Um, again, just wanted to make a quick little video and share a little bit of the things I've learned over the years, a little bit of my knowledge. Anybody's got any questions, um, concerns, leave it in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Sorry I haven't uploaded much lately. Um, kind of came down with, uh, the unmentionable disease. Now I had it bad, man, for a couple weeks. Two and a half weeks I didn't get out of bed. Anyways, feeling better now, back on the grind. It's time to get it. I'll talk to everybody soon, man. Have a good night. Uh, excuse me, have a good day. Peace.